I'm good. I am. I'm one. I'm excited to be here. Hey, can you, you can hear me good. You can see me good. I can hear you. I can see you. I'm ready to vibe. What's up? Hey, listen, <laughs> I I don't know what's going on, but I love it. I I love all I see. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's fall time. It's time to change up a bit. Thank you for so <laughs> coming on the show, man. Um, for those of you who don't know, Cleavon Maven the Fourth, you know, yes, is sir. right. He is an activist. You know, he's an all-around creative guy, and um, a, been a good friend of mine for a while now. And I, I wanted to bring him on the show because, you know. I tell you guys a lot. One of the reasons why I wanted to do the show wasn't because everybody was doing an IG show, but I felt like there were so many superstars in my circle, people that I feel like we need to spotlight, you know, because a lot of times we, it's always good to celebrate the people that, you know, who are far off, who don't anything, but I'm always like, well, how about the guys that we know? How about the guys that we go to school with? How about the guys Real. in the neighborhoods who are doing amazing things? And you're one of those people who was definitely he definitely doing amazing things and I wanted to bring you on the show because I have a lot of creatives my a lot of my followers are creatives a lot of them is just trying to figure out the business and I feel like you are definitely someone who um, who knows a lot about the business and who's had a very good amount of success in, in the things that we do and I know that you bring a wealth of knowledge to the show and so <laughs> so that's why I wanted you to, to come on so thank you so much for taking time out to I appreciate it right, thank you so much Super appreciate it. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. You've always been very supportive and very vocal about your support. Um, yeah. You know, that means a lot because everybody has said they support you, but they don't really put nothing behind it. And yeah. you've always been a person to, you know, put your work and your support in a tangible way. Yeah, absolutely. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. We're going to go right into it. Um, oh, yeah. and, and, you know, just this whole creative space. Was that something that you that you always saw yourself doing? Actually, yes. Uh, oddly enough, I was talking to my grandmother about a week ago, and she was telling me that, she was like, I got some scripts that you need to see. And I didn't know my grandmother knew the word script. And mm -hmm. I was like, what do you mean? She was like, the little plays she was writing when you was like three and stuff, your little sermons, your little plays. And yeah. I was like, when I was three and four? Um, but I remember getting cousins and all those type of people together to, you know, just do little things. and. Second grade, I had a Destiny's Child group, and I used to have them on the playground doing shows for people. Because <laughs> that's when it was Beyonce, Kelly, and Michelle. Yeah. I just had to make that work. Uh, third grade, I put a choir together. So I've always been in production in some kind of way, even if I didn't necessarily understand what it was. So my first actual show happened in my 11th grade year of high school. Wow, that's, that's crazy. Um, it's been a journey, you know? <laughs> it's been. <a> <laughs> I, say, I get tired I, when you say that. I, I say that as someone who is a student of the game myself, but also someone who knows. And me, you've talked a lot about it as well offline. It's been a journey, and I was. A lot of times, people see the glory, but not so much of the story behind it. You know, yeah, all the time. You know, and, and and I don't feel like we share, especially for, for, for those of us who are, you know, millennials and those of us who are, who are younger than us who are coming up, they look at the business and it's all about the glitz and the glamour and the lights and everything else. They don't really understand what goes behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I want to bring someone like yourself who started up very young and yeah. this young and how you start, you said, it's, you know, uh, 11th grade in high school, and up until this moment where I remember just coming in to see the show in, in, in D.C., and we got there early, but, and then we had to wait around for the show to get started, but then everyone started coming in, and I'm like, wait a minute, they're coming to see this show? Like, <laughs> I'm, like right around the building, and I'm sitting there like, this is not even opening night. This is not, this is not opening night. This, DC showed a lot of love. Crazy thing about it, I said, wait, this, this guy did 16 shows, y'all. Cleavon <laughs> did 16 shows. All 16 of those shows were sold out. Yeah. Now, 
I don't know if you guys understand what that means. If you know what the DC market is when it comes to plays and that sort of thing, it's a very challenging market to break into. You know what I mean? So, and for you to have done that and successfully did 16 shows and each show was sold out. And when I got there, I was like, this is not even opening night. And it's all these people and it was sold out. And it was just an amazing thing to watch because I say this all the time. I say this all the time. We have no idea. So I see my friend, me, uh, what's his name? He called, I don't think, me and him is going to get into it about this whole <laughs> duck name that he got. But that's my boy, um, Nick Sneed, y'all. He just joined. And me and him, we talk a lot about, this is my Howard brother, you know, we talk a lot about just the process and the business and everything else, you know. Mm, that's good. People right there and not so much of what goes into it. And I wanted to bring someone like yourself who, you know, started out from nothing and built this thing. Listen, when I put this whole live show together again and post it on Instagram, I'm going to post some of the pictures of, of like the show and everything. So y'all can really see what I'm talking about because a lot of times we can't really do that on live right now. But when I put it together, <laughs> I mean, this show was sold out, y'all, 16 times. I want you to please talk about the process because, like I said, a lot of people watching are creatives and just trying to understand, you know, how to get into the business, how to put together a successful show. So I don't want you to please speak on that, um, what your process was and how, what were the secrets to, like, you know, putting this successful show together? Uh, the process... I love the process of theater or any show for for that matter. Uh, it's it's a lot of trial and error. A lot of like breathe, the success of breathe in DC was very intentional, but I also stumbled upon it. Mm. Like that was my very first show in DC. I didn't expect it to get any love at all. Um, you again, like you said, the DC theater scene is vast. There's so many big name companies out there that are dominating the industry. And me coming up from Atlanta, yeah, with this little country show, <laughs> well, uh, I was just very surprised, mm. uh, but not surprised at all. And what I what I mean by that is, what people didn't see is the show was supposed to happen in January. Mm. I had already booked a venue, um, and we were supposed to go on in January, and it did not happen. The show was not ready. It was nerve wracking. It was nothing that anybody saw in in March and fast, I mean, no, rewind back a little further. When I first did the auditions in DC, only five people showed up. Wow. So I had no clue that I was getting ready to step into that because all the evidence before said it, that was not what I was walking into. I, I expect, I just wanted to get it done. Yeah. Um, and once the photo shoot happened and I got the costumes in and it was just like stuff started magically happening. I was just listening to Riley, how she was explaining um, that the universe will conspire with you. So a lot of planning and in production requires knowing exactly what you're going after, knowing exactly, exactly, exactly. False evidence appearing real. Yeah. You're so right. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, he, yeah. Uh, a lot of it was just staying aligned with what I wanted mm -hmm. um, and knowing when I wasn't getting just that. Yeah. Uh, and once I started to figure that out, things started to really line up. And then before I knew it, I had a whole line of people that were ready to see this show. Yeah. But it was also because I stuck with the community. Mm. A lot of people don't talk about that, but I really stuck with the community. I didn't reach out for big names or anything like that. I stuck with what was already there. Yeah. Um, I was on the streets and stuff, finding people to be in the show. Cause like I said, there was only five people in the audition and I had 25 people to cast. So I was on Facebook. I was... I was everywhere I could find, like, dancers, singers, wherever. Like, tag them. I'm trying to find these people. And that took months. Yeah. I didn't have a full cast until February, and the show was in March. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wow. I, I um, I remember. I, I say this because it seems like just yesterday that happened, but. It do, but it's two years ago now, almost three. I know, because we were working together at the time. And Shout out to Radio One. <laughs> you know, from me, and I had no idea. He like, you know, one time we got into it because he took the camera. I was like, why'd you take the camera? <laughs> 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 I said, we didn't take the why you took the camera? And, and he came back and, you know, it was, I think it was in that moment that, that I think our relationship actually took a different turn because 
I saw a certain level of humility in, in you and in how you dealt with that situation. But not to mention, when you came back and you were like, this is what I took the camera for, these are the pictures, and I couldn't even get mad because, and then I went to the, <laughs> you know what? You can take the camera again. <laughs> but, because I had no idea because we were just working, you know, the, the quote unquote nine to five at the time, but you were doing mm -hmm. all at the same time as well. And, and you know, I, 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 that's so important because a lot of times, and I say this all the time, just because it's challenging doesn't mean that God is not in it. Doesn't mean it, it's not meant to happen. Because that's if, real. You know what I mean? And if that's you can, real, real. Because it was challenges, but look at how. The alchemist. I'm, I'm reading the Alchemist too right now. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> You know, and, 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 and I say this all the time, that just because something is challenging doesn't mean that God God is not and is not, is not supposed to happen. And with all the challenges, that, in fact, now I feel like the more challenging it is, it's just a sign that you're onto something and something big is Yeah, um, I, I was getting ready to say that. I think, I think the challenge is the indicator that you are, because, you know, life is about growth. Um, yeah. If we are to reach, if we are to reach our purpose, if we are to reach, you know our personal legend we need to know what we're up against and life is set up in a way that you're going to constantly run into two lessons yeah some of those lessons will come with a win but they will also come with a lesson which is a yeah. fail yeah. uh and my productions have always been extremely challenging um i'm always surprised to see them on stage yeah. every time and i've done eight mm. every time i see a production on stage or it gets there i'm like wow how yeah. How did this get here? Because I know all the challenges in the background. You got budgeting, you got marketing, you got casting, you got rehearsals, you got, there's so many things that go on behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, and you're also dealing with humans, like real human beings. People mm -hmm. get sick. Yeah. We're black, mental health issues, all those type of things that aid into those challenges. And a lot of people quit because of that, because they think that, you know, a lot of us like to blame the devil. We like to be like, oh, well, I'm getting all these challenges and backlash. It must be the devil. And it's like, yeah. nah, yeah. you need yeah. to, you know, gain strength in these areas right here. And that's where your challenges are going to show up. I know, I'm appreciative for them now, but right. then they, they feel like bullshit. <laughs> Tell, us about, okay. Tell us about Breathe the Musical. For those of us who, who are not aware, who are not hip to what the show was about and you know, what the, the theme was, the message and everything behind it. And, and as you're talking about that as well, if you can touch on just what do you explore? What do you like to explore when you put your shows together? What's heavy on your heart? What's your passion? What do you want to see happen when you put these shows? Because everyone has a message they're trying to pass on. You know, everyone that I look up to, you know, whether that's Spike and, and what he's trying to do with talk about racial issues and inequality mm -hmm. and has something that you're passionate about. So if you could tell us what Breathe was about and then tie that into also what type of shows and themes that you like to explore in your, in your productions as well. Breathe. Breathe is about our resilience. Mm -hmm. uh, Breathe is based on the culminating results of all of the racial violence that we've experienced in America. So yeah. It doesn't happen in a particular town. Right. I call it the town of here. It's a really a mystical place. Yeah. Um, and that's why you, you see that in the costumes and in the songs. I really compiled a lot of what it is to be black culture. Um, yeah. Because what I've learned, if you really study our history, every time something drastic happens to us, we have an artistic awakening. Mm -hmm. So we got slavery that turned into Negro spirituals and coding. You got the prohibition and industrial era um, which turned into you know jazz and blues and then you got the speakeasies and as you go further and further into time you see black people coincide paying with art yeah and once i saw that breathe ended up being about what it would mean if we got together and really healed Mm. really dealt with these things. If you notice what's going on in Breathe, uh, I wanted to tackle right into the core of <clears throat> what it means to be a Black person in America. And what I mean by that is internally, before I went externally, if you ever seen Breathe, 
it's called breathing because it's really about catching your breath. Yeah. Like taking this stuff as it comes. There's so many different things in breathe. I talk about black women, they're major, you know, cornerstone of the production and our lives. I talk about the creation of our music. I talk about our spirituality. If the conflict in breathe is yeah. you have a traveling revival coming into town and a traveling brothel coming into town at the same time. Yeah. And those two worlds clash. Mm. So before we even get into white people and violence and stuff like that, you see black people trying to figure out how to get along. Yeah. And uh, breathe is really about our resilience and what happens when we stop paying attention. Mm. Mm. Hi, Damo. Down with Hi, this. Down. Yeah. And it's always hard to tell people what breathe is about because it's like a Lovecraft country in that way. Like, there's so many different things. Yeah. There's so many, um, and that's that's what my writing does. I really just go into taboos, and I I love metaphor. I love poetry. So a lot of my shows and a lot of what I write, I try to write right into your soul. Like, I try to go straight into that. Let's go into that dark place. Yeah. Let's clean up this. Can you move that? Get this out the way. Look at this. Uh-huh. You saw that over there? Uh-huh. We didn't forget about that either. That's what my shows are about. So, yeah, breathe, strip, pray. Um, yeah. I'm writing a new show called Gravity. Yeah. They're about how we transition from yeah. era to era. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and, and you know, the other thing that I was telling you offline when we talked, even before I started doing this um, IG Live show, was the timelessness of Brie. You know, when things were happening, I was like, yo, we got to bring Brie back in some way, shape, or form. I don't know how, but I just felt like, the, I just, I remember being in the audience at that time and just watching, and I was front row. So, you know, I was feeling different. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember just just what I felt in that moment, and when everything else was happening, even with you know Brianna uh, Brianna Taylor and everything, I was like, you know what? This is I feel like what what you did then, the timelessness of it is I feel like we we need to bring it back again because it speaks to what we're what we're going through now, and it always speaks to what we're dealing with continuously, and that's how a classic is born. You know, it's something that yeah. is timeless. You know? uh -huh. That's something that would breathe in. And ever since then, man, you, you've gone on to do a lot of amazing things, you know what I'm saying? Um, but before we talk about the show that you did, you know, that was also sold out, uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, it was amazing because, you know, me and you, there's nothing that's on top. You know what I mean? We talk about everything. Yeah, we talk about everything. That's what I'm saying. We can stay and breathe if we want to. I'm ready. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were talking about how even with the success of Breathe, you had this dark period that you went through and that you, yeah. had, to come out, you had to come out of that. That's and what I, people didn't know. Right. Yeah. Right. I want you to briefly touch on that because it's easy to say, man, he had this successful show and woo woo woo, but no one sees what happens when the curtains close. They don't see the heartbreak. Right. Right. Um, yeah. I, I never speak on this, so this is a this is a first. Um, my shows have always been very successful, but they've been personal failures. Right. Mm. Um, and that comes with surprise to some people, and some people, you know, production is really hard, yeah. especially independent production. There's nobody throwing grants at you or anything like that. But what happened with Breed in DC is I went from the richest year of my life i'm talking about i made six figures that year to yeah. homelessness right after that show wow um because i gave it everything i gave it my all i spent everything i had i thought i was gonna really go on tour um yeah. working with um, kathy hughes i learned a lot there yeah. and yeah what people didn't know is my life fell apart right afterwards so i went from being in all these tabloids and all these newspapers and you know publications to sleeping on my friend's couch wow. for six months um it got so bad to where before i moved back home i was living in a dispensary mm. um and it was devastating and embarrassing and all these things and that's what people don't know that goes into production 
uh, I had to learn a lot of things the hard way. I didn't have any mentors or anything like that that were upholding me or keeping, you know, that type of thing moving. I just had to learn it by trial and error. Um, yeah. And it wasn't the first time it happened. So it really felt like a double whammy. Each time it has got progressively better. But artistry is really about experience. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, people ask like, well, how did you come up with this? Or how did you see that? I lived it. Yeah. Breathe is my personal journey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and every time I do it, like you said, it's a timeless piece. It's a timeless piece because it hasn't ended. Mm. The show changes every time I put it up. Yeah. Because, you know, these things are still happening to us and not just happening to us as a race, but as individuals. Yeah. I was not exempt from life after that. I just knew I was going to be famous and everything's going to take off. And I ended up right back at square one. It was like, wait. What happened? I, what happened? I did everything right. Right. Yeah. Um, and it was also about who was around me. That yeah. was the big that was the big lesson then. Kathy Hughes taught me to leave my ego out of it. Yeah. Um, because part of me was getting a big head, but that's that wasn't the detriment. That wasn't a downfall. Yeah. I was living with the absolute maniac for five years. Mm. And nobody knew that. Nobody knew what I was going through at home with roommates and family and nobody knew those things. I just kept pushing it all into my craft. Pushing yeah. it all into, you know, escaping yeah. through the show. You know, and go ahead. Yeah, no, it's 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 it, you, you touch on a lot of things. And what 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 would you say was responsible for that? Was it because you didn't have a complete understanding of the managing aspect of it financially of what we do? As you know, because you know, there are so many different aspects to it. There's a creative side. Right. Yeah. Would you say I, that you didn't really have a complete understanding of? you know how to manage it financially or what 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 would you say looking back now was responsible for the turn that things took after the success of brief i think it was all of the above um what i have learned in my career and brief turns 10 years old next year so um this show has been going since 2011 i'm proud of that because right. it has not been easy in any step of the way um it really fell down into structure. I was not structured for the success that I wanted. Mm. So what, what what happened was I would always get these big blow ups. Yeah. Um, because what you what people have to understand is when a seed is developing, well, let's put it as a baby. Yeah. Um, babies have to be born. Either they're gonna come out still or they they have to be born. Yeah. And but every baby starts off as one cell. And yeah. that one cell has all the information to create a whole human. Yeah. And that cell divides and divides and divides. It's structural. Right. I did not have the structure to maintain my baby. Mm. I had all the vision and the ideas and the creativity. You know, I put all of my skills into it, but I did not have the ingredients to sustain that type of success. Yeah. I did not have the financial knowledge. I did not have the team. Mm. I did not have the willingness. Um, mm. Well, I'm going to change that part. You you will run into a lot of people in your career that are willing, yeah, but are not equipped. Mm. Mm. So I had a lot of people around me, but <clears throat> this is no shade to nobody at all. It was all learning experience. I had a lot of people around me, but a lot of them were not equipped for where I was trying to go. And right. I wasn't either. So mm. it ended up being a downfall to it because there was no structure to sustain that kind of movement. That mm. that ma Breathe is a massive show. Yeah. It was ambitious for me to even do it. That's why I say every time I look back on it, I'm like, wow, I can't yeah. believe it happened for one. Right. But two, I'm glad it stopped so I can go back to the drawing board. Yeah. So I can figure out a little bit more. So I can take it to another level. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think that, and I remember when, when me and you talked over the phone, you were in such a very dark place. And, mm -hmm. and I remember just, because one of the things that I believe in life is that we live life in levels and we arrive in stages. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. 
process. It's, it's a journey. Sometimes you're high, sometimes you're low. But the most important thing is that when you're low, don't forget about your highs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, that's good. <laughs> tweet that. Y'all tweet that. Tweet that. <laughs> no, All the way. Don't forget about your highs because when me and you talked, you were such in a, such a, in a dark place. And I remember telling you, I said, Cleveland, have you forgotten who you are? And yeah, we did. had a whole conversation. I was like, yo, you put together a show that sold out 16 times in a city that is so challenging to break into. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care what. <laughs> Now, I don't want you to ever forget that. And the reason why I say that for anyone watching right now is because a lot of times you're going to go through times when it's not going well. You're going to go through times when it's hard. But yeah. you know, it sounds so spiritual. But like as the song says, if God did it before, he could do it again. So always got to. And I'm a witness to that one. I'm when, a witness to but, that one. You know, what happened back then? And I was just telling you that, yo, no matter what's going on right now, don't forget that you were the same person that put this show together and had the success. And don't let anything take away from that because a, a lot of times that's what happens in our yeah. confidence is, is, is being messed with and, 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 and that sort of thing. And, you know, that again, you know, live here that, you know, you, you did something amazing and don't ever forget that. You know, thank it, you. You through your process. Um, but I love that you spoke on that though, because we forget our worthiness, and that's what happened to me. Right. I I forgot my value and worthiness because when you are standing amongst failure, all yeah. you can see is ruins. Mm -hmm. You just see everything you've built all around you. You all you see is the smoke and the brimstone. But what you have to understand about your life falling apart is just like the forest. When the forest burns down. Ama something amazing happens. Yeah. A bigger forest grows. Yeah. Because when you are standing in the midst of the ruins and you have survived, you know more than the ruins. Yeah. I know more than what has fallen apart. Yeah. And you got to remember that you are worthy and God can do it again. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought that up because that's, that's, that's where my dark place came from. Okay. That was all out the window once everything fell apart. I forgot all about the glitz and the glam and the seeing the happy people. Yeah. All I could see was, oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah. That, that's so important because, you know, I remember even with the whole everything happening, just going through something similar myself. And, you know, I was dealing with a client that it was just something that it wasn't like it was challenging or hard or anything. It was just the fact that they didn't really understand the, the process and they were still in, in in just trying to figure out their brand and what they want to do with themselves as a as a company and that's another show <laughs> got to where i felt like i was doing so much and they just weren't seeing it because of different things that was going on with them. One of the things that that did to me was it messed with my, my confidence and i i just started yeah. to I started to feel like, man, because one of the things that's so important to me, and I tell people this all the time, and it's a good and a bad thing, I'm so tied to the work that I do. Like, my work means a lot to me. Like, you could take anything from me, but don't touch my work. Like, I touch my work. It means a lot to me. And recently, I just found that it's so easy when you're so caught up in what you're this professional side that you fail to understand this thing that is going up personally that you have to deal with. And that season of my life, when everything happened and I felt like for the first time ever, I didn't feel confident about my work because of how they didn't quite see what I was trying to do with the, mm -hmm. the work and everything. And one of the things I had to do is to remind myself of all the other things that we have done as a company. I had yeah. to of all the success that we've had with clients and we, we work with the mayor's office and we work with one of the biggest nonprofit organizations in the country. And I say that to say, guys, that even when you go through times that are challenging, times when you feel like it's not going well, please don't forget about your blessings. Don't forget about yeah. your blessings. Yeah. Listen to me, because I'll Times, because you're the one that did that. And a lot of times you did it. You get those times, you know? <laughs> you did it. You, I always say, because this is a lonely journey. It is lonely, and it's lonely for a reason, uh, because you need to be isolated so you can pay attention to the direct instructions meant just for you. 
Um, and a lot of times we get so caught up in looking for all the people huh. and we, we tie our confidence and our self worth to the people. Yeah. And you can't do that because what you have to offer the people is special and unique. They need it. And you, you got to be yourself. You got to be your best self for that. You can only be your best self by believing in your best self. Yeah. So I always say it's dark because you're glowing. You're a star. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Talk to us about you. You got a lot going on. After Breathe, you, you did this um, amazing production. Pray, mm -hmm. You know, and um, talk to us about that. We there can't we hear you anymore. Okay, there okay. we go. Hold on. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Let me make sure y'all can hear me still. Okay, boom. So, pray. Um, I got a random call from a friend of mine. Again, I was in the lowest of low places. I had all the way gave up on theater. I was like, I ain't doing none of that no more. <laughs> um, but I got a call from the National Association, the North American drama therapy association conference such a long name but a little bit you're getting a little you're you're a little low if you can a little low you're about to bring it yeah you're a little low can you hear me now yeah yeah that's good that's good all, all right. right good 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 okay so I got a call from the North American Drama Therapy Association Conference, um, which I had never heard of before. I didn't know how they knew me or anything like that, but they knew me to a friend. And they asked me to do a piece on uh, what it meant to be black and gay growing up in church, which I was like, oh, ooh, I don't even want to touch this subject. But what came out of it was, um, it was controversial for one. I compared, uh, I think all of us, have a certain manner of Christ about us. There's a Christhood in all of us. There's Licious the Christ. There is who is this? Giselle Love the Christ. Yeah. Um, you know, I think all of us have that very special thing that's in us that is pivotal for the yeah. whole world. So I put myself in this world of what if I came here as Jesus? Yeah. What if it was me? Yeah. What if I had all this power? I was the Son of God. Clean the Christ. All these yeah, and that's where Clean the Christ came from. Yeah, yeah. And I was ready for the ridicule that came with it, but um, that's where prey came out of. Because if you look at the story of Christ, um, I tell people the biggest lesson in the story of Christ is not to sacrifice yourself for everyone else, because Christ already did that. That's the ultimate sacrifice. He sacrificed himself for everybody else. And I wrote a whole show around it about growing up and being so important in church um, you know, being on everybody's usher board and choir and, you know, the whole nine yards on pastor son. So I was in all of that stuff. Yeah. And once I became an adolescent and people started to notice differences about me. Yeah. It was all downhill. It was like everybody turned on me. Um, and I wrote a whole show about it. Pray has all original music um, that I wrote in that dark time in my life. Yeah. Uh, I perform it myself. It's a one man show. I had never, I have not performed in so long. Yeah. So picture me in this conference room in Philadelphia. I had never been to Philadelphia before yeah. in front of 150 people that I don't know. Um, in my draws during this show. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's crazy, man. And we're going to post pictures. Once we put this all together, you're going to see some of the stuff that he's talking about. Um, but it's been, it's been a, it's been an amazing journey for you. And you guys just recently, you just recently relaunched your company and yeah. a lot of amazing things. And I want you to talk about that because if people need to know what you're up to, um, that you're not just a playwright, but you also direct, you also produce, you also write. Um, I mean, you're a playwright, so you write, but you know, yeah. you're not writing. <laughs> but now you're writing movies and TV shows and all of these things. So I want you to share with us some of the stuff that you guys um, have going on um, with, with Clay Visions. Shout out to my vision engineers. Um, that's Clay Visions. We are vision engineers. Uh, it used to just be me, but now I have an amazing team that has been really putting their heels yeah. in the dirt and making it happen from here to Atlanta to D.C. as the projects are working on in L.A. Yeah. And we just relaunched the company um, because at first I was doing a bunch of graphic design and web design and all that stuff, but I didn't have the capacity to do that anymore. I wanted to get back to 
writing. Uh, so when we relaunched Play Visions, Play Visions is now just project development and management, production coordination. We do talent and marketing campaigns as well. So yeah. I'm able to be a coach to a lot of small businesses and corporations. Uh, and I'm loving my clients right now. We've been pulling in some new, exciting clients. Like you were saying, you got to work with some nonprofits. It's fun. So like, I love being in the room. Like, put me in the room. All, yeah. all I'm going to do is sit and think and create things. Um, so we relaunched Clee Visions in that way. And then I expanded. I have Media to Go now. Uh, Media to Go is my digital base. So I have a digital department. Media to Go, we handle hosting, domains, self service wealth building. Uh, I have a social media platform. So if people are out there trying to figure out social media metrics, I got a team for it now. Um, yeah. So we've just been expanding. I'm building a network. Uh, you guys will see it a little next year called Nucleus. N-U-C-L-E-U-S from the Nucleus TV. So it's my first streaming platform. Uh, I've been producing podcasts lately. I have three under my belt right now. So shout out to Audible Orgy, to Unstable Steadman. Uh, I have my own podcast coming out in a few weeks. I can't tell y'all about it yet, though, because <laughs> I want it to come out in a few weeks. Uh, and then... I am working on a show in Atlanta, a pilot um, called Not Me. So it's a lot of great things happening. And, of course, Bree turns 10 next year. So I got a lot on my plate right now trying to make it all happen. But now it's all it's, it's all structured. So yeah. I'm excited about the relaunch of Clee Visions because now I get to, you know, engineer other visions. Um, yeah. Like I, when you were first talking about this show, it was amazing for you to be. <laughs> Thank you. Uh <laughs> it was right. amazing for you to reach out to me. Um, like, I thought that was really dope. I mean, you know, both of us reach out to each other all the time when we got something new going on. But me tackling a network, I was like, oh, God, I don't know if I got this in me. But the way it's been happening has been wonderful. Like, people have been coming to me with their ideas and things like that. Some of them I can take. Some of them I can't. Um, but it's been a lot of fun relaunching Clean Visions because I'm being able to do and have the capacity to do everything I've ever dreamed of, whether that's production or just helping small businesses or people that got visions. That's my passion because I already know what it takes. Yeah. No, no, that's amazing. And, and I think that um, you, I think a lot of times if, you, if your vision is not bigger than you, then it's not big enough. It not big enough. And a lot of times it's not going to be, it's not going to be just something that you can manage yourself. You know, you may start up doing it on your own, but then it keeps growing. And that's when you realize that you start seeing people coming to you and all the, the resources that you need are being provided. You look around, you're like, y'all think I'm the expert? You know what I'm saying? It'd be like that. And it has to be bigger than you, y'all. And don't be afraid to everyone watching to dream, to just have these crazy ideas and mm -hmm. everything has to be bigger than you it has to be because if it's not it's not big enough and i feel like it has to be so big that it's not going to just serve you and serve everyone around you i mean you guys I, i'm not trying to size him up or anything but this is a young man who's really about the game about the business and every aspect of it for those of you who are creatives who are actors who you know want to learn about the business and everything this is someone that you need he, um, reach out to someone that you need to follow and see what he's about and what he's got going on. He's, it's a lot that he's just talked about in this short time that we've had him on. And um, you, you I, again, when we started up, I was like, you're such a, a wealth of wisdom and, and knowledge and information um, for, for what we do. And looking back 10 years of Breed now, Breed turns 10, 10 next year, and all of the projects that you've done so far, what are some of the lessons that you can share with the people before you go tonight? Maybe top five. And looking back now, you can say, okay. these are things that I've learned so far. And for anyone who is thinking of coming into this industry or into this business, or even just life in general, these are some things that I can say that I've learned that I want to pass on to you. Um, the first thing I would say is you need to know your, yourself. You need to, and, and know that yourself evolves because you know there's still a lot of lessons to learn even now yeah so give yourself the room and the love and the compassion to grow yeah. to make mistakes you need those mistakes um because again there is no way to give you the blueprint to where you're going because it's your journey it is you you're yeah. going yeah. um so that's number one stick with that gut instinct you need to know you need to be able to follow your star player um, because the moment you get disconnected from yourself and your own alignment 
that's when the structure comes in because you know you're going to be looking to everybody else number two um i say plan to fail prepare to win mm. like plan to fail well, people yeah. always say like you got to be planned you need to plan people don't plan to fail they they fail to plan no you need to plan to fail yeah. um i learned that in coding um i do a lot of coding now and when you're doing coding you got to go in first knowing that whatever you're trying to do first it's not going to work it's not going to yeah. be what you want to see the first time so if you've never did a play before or a podcast, it's not you're not gonna get it right the first time. You shouldn't yeah. expect that. But how you learn is to plan around your failures. Okay, that's yeah. what I've learned in ten years. Okay, I know this part is a weak part of mine. I know that's a weak part. So let me plan in those places so I don't fail there again. So okay, boom, boom, boom. So plan to fail, prepare to win. Like I said in the beginning, success hits you like a ton of bricks out of nowhere. God yeah. works slowly or suddenly. You'll look up one day, like um, your last interview said, you can post a picture that you didn't even plan on blowing up, and all of a sudden you huge. Yeah. Like when Kathy Hughes said she was coming to my show, and I was talking to Al Sharpton and all these different millionaires and billionaires, and they sitting on my first row. Yeah. I was, I was not like I said, y'all. I was not prepared for that type of success. Right. So plan to fail, prepare to win. Right. Um, number three, get you some people you can fail around. And y'all, you'll hear me talk about failure a lot because people glorify success too much. Mm. Success is a coming and going type of thing. Right. Failure is constant. That's how we evolve. Yeah. Things die. They decay. They have to. So yeah. you need to be ready for, you need to be ready to shed. So get you some people that you can fail around. Yeah. Um, like some people that like get you some licenses, get you some people that you can call when after the win and you done fell apart and you looking around because your win is not going to last forever. That's number five. Yeah. Don't think that high is going to last forever. It's not. It's yeah. not. It might last two weeks. It might last two years, but eventually it has to crumble because you got to go higher. You can't plateau. Mm -hmm. So get ready for that. Plan your life. Plan to fail yeah. get used to it yeah. embrace it so when your wins come that they are something that you can really build off of something yeah. that can carry you into the next the the next you know movement of yours so that's what i've learned in 10 years um of, of production like you you really need a star team and that star team has to start with yourself yeah. it has to start with yourself you got to know when you need to pause you got to know when you need to uh, separate yourself from the work yeah 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 and even just from what she said too just knowing how to uh, manage success when it comes you know um, because like you said it comes and goes and if, if you're not you're not ready for it prepare for it it could definitely knock you off of like your feet you know and yeah just, I got a glimpse of everything I had ever wanted and it threw me for a loop, I was in La La Land for a minute. It was like, "Woo, I got the bank account, I got yeah. the press." Yeah. Um, and you get so excited, and you move it in that, and then you learn like, "Oh, things like that need structure." Right. They need it. Skyscrapers on just you know the blueprint on the paper. <laughs> you gotta go find the right steel. You gotta find the right window treatments. All that stuff to sustain that thing. Right. Right. All right. Right. No, that's um. That's amazing, and I'm so excited for where you're at right now. I'm excited for the growth and, and you know, just seeing you. you. Too. I'm proud of you, brother. I'm real proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's such an amazing thing to see. I love to see people win, you know. I say this, and people are like, Licious, what do you mean? And I said, like, I know I really love to see people win because huh? people like yourself who have really been at it for a long time, when you start to see that things are moving and doors are opening, people like oh my god i'm like you have no idea what this man has been through you have no idea <laughs> you know what i'm saying and so then just come out of nowhere and that's why i wanted to bring you on because i i thought and i still think and i would always think because it's it's such an amazing thing you know um what you guys did you know it's it's it's, it's crazy and i just feel like a lot of people i remember being even working with you when we had to do the whole piece on the millennial money moves and I came to one of the rehearsals and I shot the whole thing and put it together. That's fine. 
and find that video. Speaking of which, because uh, I, I got it, I'll send it to you. <laughs> I was looking for it because I need to put it in the in post. I I mean, I, yeah, I got it. Have a, and put it here so people see it. Um, but just seeing, I remember, like, again, because I was front row, but then when I stood up, I was like, wow, it's a lot of people, and this thing is sold out. And and I wanted until we were talking, like the, the whole show was over, that I just really understood everything was that was going on. And I wanted you to talk about that because it takes a lot, um, you know, managing people and, and being in this business. So I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show and just sharing with us thank you. On so far. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This is amazing what you're doing. I'm enjoying it. You guys, I really want to thank all of you that tuned in. Um, everyone that left a comment, some of you saying this is great talent matchup, great work. What's up, Jabari? Um, yeah, um, it's a lot of you guys, man. And someone says, hey, how you been? And I, I'm good. How are you? You know, thank you guys so much for tuning in and, um, you know, just leaving comments and letting us know that you're, you appreciate what we're doing. Um, we're going to see you next week. Next week lineup is crazy. Um, we there. We have two show two we have two two guests right now, but it's like the way that things are going, the elections coming up, I, I might add another guest at like six next week because these these women are just what what they're currently doing with just talking about issues that affect black women. I, I just gotta get them on the show, you know, and so we might end up having three guests next week. Um, so look forward to that. It's I'm excited, y'all. Really excited about you guys that are coming on. You're gonna learn a lot of things that uh, they're doing to just empower our women. And and um, with elections coming up, I think it's important, you know. And we want to speak to that. You know, you're an activist yourself. And before you go, I want you to talk about voting. You know, um, oh, voting. A lot of yeah. us millennials feel like, why should I vote when? The winners are even decided. I mean, I've heard that. People say that I'm not voting. You know, it don't matter who I vote for, like this person is gonna win anyway. I think I think I'm gonna say something real basic. Yeah. You need to vote because you need to exercise using your voice, period. It is not about what people do with your voice, it is about you using it. Right. If you don't use it, it's just good as it doesn't matter what they do with it. Yeah. But if you did use it, that you have still taken a stand. Um, like everything I say, everything I do is not always received. And that's for everybody. Everything you think, see, and your opinion is all, not always going to be received. Yeah. But you got to know your voice is important. Yeah. And that's what this election is about. Yeah. That we need to get back to our voice, our right to have a voice. Yeah. And that's why you need to vote. Because regardless of what they do, you yeah. need to have the consciousness that you've done your part, that you used your voice. Right. So can't nobody take that from you? Can't nobody say you was doing this or that? You yeah. used your voice. Yeah. It, uh, I, I want to be on the bandwagon too, to be like, oh, no, they ain't gonna do this, they ain't gonna do that, I don't like none of the candidates. But it's yeah. really not about any of that. It's yeah. about me using my voice so the next generation learns how to use theirs. Because yeah. who's to say we're still gonna be using polls and stuff in the next 10 years? This stuff might all become digitally automated. But we yeah. gotta create we got to start creating systems, and the way we do that is by using our voice, yeah. by showing up, regardless if we understand or we want to. But it, it, this is America. We yeah. always got to do something to make us uncomfortable here. Yeah. Um, we, we always have to do something to make us uncomfortable here, and I know voting is something that makes us uncomfortable because they have shown us that they don't support us in that way. But it is extremely important that we exercise just using our voice. Because, yeah. you know, voting can catapult you into something totally bigger. Um, I ended up doing a lot of activism this year. Yeah. I ain't never been into politics. I have always stayed away from them. And I looked up and I was leading marches. And I was yeah. like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> all that. Um, but, all that. but that's all, that's why it's important. Um, because it's not just about, it's not just about our, you know, it's not just about our protests and are you know everything we're saying it's about our presence they need yeah. to see that we are here yeah and not even they need to see we got kids out here they need to see that we are here so yeah. when they get opposition they know how to move so that's yeah. why i say vote right now because 
your your presence your presence is important it's so important yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and guys listen I, I can't say enough you've heard it from him um and a lot of people have been talking about because last elections it was crazy reason why and over the next few shows i'm gonna have everyone in the show talk about why we need to vote and the reason why that's so important was especially for us millennials because last election a lot of us didn't vote a lot of us felt like you know we didn't have any vote of what was going to happen and we weren't serious with this thing i mean people were voting for the the, with the chimpanzee whatever the thing was that, <laughs> yeah i remember that i was like what the hell is going on like y'all think this is a joke you know what I mean? get it. you know a lot of us have lost faith yeah and our and i get it i get it but we can't lose faith and not have a solution at the same time that's right. a double fail right so if you out there you're not gonna vote you need another plan because the way it works here is voting you gotta vote you gotta vote man you i don't know we listen and especially the reason why i'm saying i know because especially for us millennials like we're the ones in last election we're the ones that they did the survey like i was looking at them numbers like look at look at y'all look look at, look at <laughs> if i had voted i'm just you saying was mad at y'all yeah there was a lot of i know a lot of, i don't want to i don't want to you know we, that's not what we do on the show we, we don't want to name names but it was a lot of people in my circle that's like man listen i'm not gonna vote because of this that and the third I, and and when everything happened we were sitting there like with our mouths open like but well, you know, again, it goes back to voice. A lot of us are afraid of our voice. A lot of people are like, I ain't gonna vote because it's dang what it is. You are intimidated by voting. Right. You're so intimidated that, by the government. Please, please go out there, vote. Early voting is, is already begun in a lot of places. Use your voice. And there's something that I never forget, and I'm close with this. I think it was, um, I was privileged enough to be in the presence of um, the great Donnie Simpson, and he was said something i never forget <laughs> he said that that one up, <laughs> right there you know uh, and cleveland designed that thing y'all if y'all didn't if y'all didn't know he designed the you know the little the whole look like i the, love donnie simpson right? yeah, cool. but, tell us what donnie said uh, right <laughs> but but donnie said something about voting i never forget he was like we need to remember that a lot of people for, for us to be able to vote, mm -hmm. lives die in the process, and just out of honoring that alone, you have to be able to go out and use your voice, and to be able to say, "I did my part." And if everyone can confidently say, "I'm gonna do my part," "I'm gonna do what I can do," that's all we need. We talk that's about all that's all we need. I do mine, you do yours, and together. We're creating this. The more change. voices we have, the louder we are. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, once again, thank you, Cleveland, for joining the show. Thank you, guys. Thank you, and um, I am going to. We're going to put all this together. For those of you who missed it, we're going to post it again um, so that you can watch it and relive some of the moments and watch the whole thing on our YouTube. So make sure that you subscribe as well. I'm going to post that to our YouTube page so you can subscribe. And um, listen, y'all. God bless y'all. Be positive, um, no matter what it is that you're going through, dealing with it this time, just know that it's not the end of the world, that your best days are still in front of you. Um, the most important thing is that you live to fight another day. So keep your head up, stay positive, and keep moving. God bless y'all. I'm going to see y'all next week. Have a good night. This is people.